In most developed markets, interest rates are near or below zero, yet inflation rates are still below target. What, if anything, can central banks do to boost their economies? It's certainly true that central banks uh, are running into a dilemma. It's now been eight years, I think, that we've had interest rates at or below zero across developed markets. And, and we still have inflation below target, particularly in the euro area and in Japan, where they're in outright deflation now. And we're starting to see central banks trying to think even further out to, you know, if you think of the unconventional policies we've already had, negative interest rates, quantitative easing, um, you know, the Bank of Japan talking about overshooting their inflation target. We never saw these types of policies before the global financial crisis. So they've got their creative thinking hats on right now of what more they can do. And I think there's also been you know, perhaps criticism from outside that perhaps this problem of low inflation can't even be solved by central banks. So, you know, there's talk of maybe bringing in fiscal policy or structural reforms from governments. But it's certainly a time where I think central banks are reflecting on, you know, what is their role and what more can they do from here? In theory, I mean, there, there are no limits on how creative they can, they can be, <laughs> as we probably have been seeing for, for a while. Um, uh, there are uh, conversations about things like helicopter money, which is effectively monetary financing of the debt uh, and, and things like that. Um, but what is really starting to become a little bit of a concern is uh, not only that the effects are not there, not only that we are not seeing inflation to pick up, but also if there are other unintended consequences of these, of these policies, right? The, the dislocations in the financial markets. Um, when we think what happened to interest rates this year, uh, for example, in the U.S., with the U.S. economy faring, like fairly well in terms of, of economic growth, is still rates going another uh, a few basis points uh, more uh, down. That basically start giving some indications that there could be some some dislocations, some unintended consequences, uh, medium term of of uh, uh, of this rate uh, environment. Not only U.S., but mostly uh, from the global front. In general, there's there's been an over reliance on monetary policy since the uh, the the onset of the global financial crisis. Ben Bernanke was very vocal in the idea that monetary policy has limits. Uh, Mario Draghi echoed those statements, and uh, Janet Yellen herself has has called on other policymakers, be they fiscal policymakers, be it be it changes in structural policy, the need for those to to try to pick up some of the slack. Uh, not a complete handoff of the baton. We're not going to see any any type of, of of abrupt tightening of monetary policy, but more a, a sharing sharing the wealth, so to speak, so that that we can try to get a foothold, not only on on the uh, the the central bank's uh, stated objectives, typically inflation in the U.S., inflation and, uh, and the labor market, but also on global growth, right? That's really what people are clamoring for. And at the end of the day, monetary policy can't be relied on as a sole driver of growth in, in any environment.